Recently, an F-22 aircraft incident occurred north of Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson during a routine flying mission. Communication with the aircraft was suddenly lost and search and rescue teams were deployed. Yesterday evening about 7.40 p.m., one of our F-22s lost contact with, uh, with ground radar. Um, we immediately began search operations in coordination with the, uh, the 11th uh, Rescue, Co Rescue Coordination Center. Uh, at this point, we believe we've located the crash site about 100 miles north of Anchorage. Um, it, we don't have a good handle right now on the condition of the pilot. He is obviously the, the foremost in our thoughts right now is getting him back safely. This morning about 10.15, uh, the, Air, the Alaska Air National Guard helicopter found a site that, that is, fits the data and the description of where the, uh, we thought the mishap probably occurred. Uh, and so they found a crash site. They were unable to land and land on the crash site to take a closer look, but we scrambled in another helicopter that should be in the area in the next few moments that's going to actually land and we're going to get ensure that that was indeed an F-22 and that is the crash site. Uh, as we work through this, we're still, we're still doing an active search to try to find the pilot. Perhaps he ejected uh, until we can get, you know, no kidding, uh, figure out that the pilot, whether he ejected from the airplane or he is uh, in, in the airplane itself, we do not know. Okay. As always, the uh, Alaskan community has come together. The outpouring of responses is great. So thanks to the Alaskan community for their support and in the uh, Alaskan Air National Guard to help us. Great. Thanks a lot. The condition of the pilot is still unknown. Air Force Staff Sergeant Daniel Delgado, Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson, Alaska. Good evening. I'm Colonel Jack McMillan, the third wing commander. Thanks for coming out tonight. It's important to keep the uh, the local community informed uh, during this trying time for the third wing. As you know, we lost an F-22 on Tuesday night, and evidence at the crash site has led us to conclude that Captain Jeff Haney did not eject from the F-22 that he was flying and that he indeed died in the crash. We have not found the body yet or discovered any remains, so let me kind of talk for a moment about what we do have. At the crash site, we found part of the ejection seat which if a pilot was able to eject, the seat would go with him and it would not be anywhere at or near the site. We also found some of the personal items, i.e. his anti-G suit, which he's wearing, part of his flight suit, just personal gear that has led us to determine that uh, Captain Haney did indeed perish with the aircraft. Obviously, this is a huge loss for the third wing and for the Air Force, but it's even a greater loss and it's a very emotional time for the entire Haney family. We're doing everything we can to support them right now, and we would ask that you would respect their privacy during this trying time. Uh, as we move forward, we're really looking now at a recovery operation. Over the last day and a half to two days, not only the Air Force, but the National Guard, Alaska National Guard, the U.S. Army Forces in Alaska, the Department of Transportation, and state police have been crucial to get equipment and people at or near the crash site so that we can begin recovering the airplane, find the body, and now begin a, an official investigation. We have about 130 folks up there right now. It's a very austere location where we're having to set up tents uh, and food, uh, and it's very cold, and the nighttime's getting down to minus 20. Uh, but we're getting the folks up there. We have an interim safety team in place that are, that are collecting and, and securing uh, evidence for this crash. We have a full-time safety investigation board. The president will be here tomorrow, and the, he, they will soon go up to the, uh, to the site and begin the, the process of determining the cause of this accident. It's basically in a kind of a wet area. It's in a valley between a ridge, and it, it looks like, well, it, it, it's basically a, a, about an 18 to 20 foot round hole, and it's got uh, water. So there's, a, I don't know how much water is in it now. It's starting to freeze over. Uh, there are some parts of the airplane that are outside that, but really it, it, the majority of the airplane is, is now gone beneath the, uh, the earth, so it's going to require uh, some effort to get the airplane out. So I'll, I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll accept that. The weather was beautiful. It was a, uh, a clear night, about 77 to 80% moon illumination, which means you could see the ground, you could see mountains, you could see the terrain. So uh, it, it, was a great, it was a great night to, uh, to fly airplanes. I would like to close with one last thing. I'd like to thank the local community for the, for the outpouring of, of phone calls and things they've been doing to try to support this. As always, our, our Anchorage community does a great job of supporting uh, the Third Wing and Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson. So thanks for being out here, and thanks for passing the news. Have a great night. Thank you.